Welcome to Power Searching with Google. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to focus your search to get the best results. First, I'll give a quick overview of basic searching techniques. Use quotation marks around phrases so that Google searches for the phrase, not the individual words. Use Boolean operators, and, or, not, to combine terms. Here, I've used or to search for all of these terms. Here, I've used not to take avian flu out of my search. The and between the first two phrases is assumed. Use parentheses to group terms that should be searched together. To do a more complicated search, you can use Google's advanced search page, where you can combine terms and look for specific sites or file types. But you can also use shortcuts and do a complicated search right from Google's main search box. An asterisk acts as a wildcard to look for variations of a word. A tilde will include synonyms in your search. A plus sign includes terms that Google would normally exclude. A minus sign excludes terms that Google would normally include. And dots allow you to search for a range of numbers. Let's look at the way these shortcuts can work. I've used an asterisk here to retrieve transplant, transplants, and transplantation. I've used a tilde before the word organ to retrieve synonyms of organ, such as heart, kidney, and liver, in addition to organ. I've used a plus sign to keep the word and in the search. A plus sign also helps in searching for foreign words that have diacritics and for misspellings. I've used a minus sign to take music out of the search. Here's a search that puts it all together. I'm looking for information on brain death in Japan, including information on the Japan Organ Transplant Network from 1990 to 2000. So I entered brain death in quotes, then Japan asterisk to include sites with related words such as Japanese. I put a plus sign before J-O-T-N-W to make sure that Google searches for that initialism and I used dots between 1990 and 2000 to search for information within that date range. But there's more that I can do to focus my search. Using operators will let me make my search even more specific. To search for information in a specific site, use site colon. To search within a specific URL, use in URL colon. To search for a specific type of file, use file type colon. Here, I've searched for the CDC website. To look for specific information within the site, I'll add tilde guidelines MRSA to find information on guidelines and related words and MRSA infections. To find information on clinical trials on websites with the word cancer in them, I've entered clinical trials in quotes in URL colon cancer. To find information on diabetes in children on sites with the word diabetes in the URL, I've searched using diabetes tilde child asterisk in URL colon diabetes. To find specific types of files, for example, PowerPoints, I've just entered the concept I want and file type colon PPT. To search for information on HIPAA in Michigan on the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services website in the PDF format, I've entered HIPAA Michigan site colon cms.hhs.gov file type colon PDF. Advanced search from Google. And uh, let's put in migraines. There we go. And uh, this time, click on this right down here, sort of hidden because it's closed all the time. It says date, usage rights, numeric range, and more. And you click on it, and uh, lo and behold, what do you find? But a thing called usage rights, and it even explains all these different usage rights things. If you click on it, it takes you to a page that talks about all of these different types of usage rights. And um, 
free to use, share, or change even commercially is one of the options. Look at this. Okay, let's bring the scroll list down. Not filtered. Bing. Look, free to use, share, or modify even commercially. My gosh, that sounds like the ticket. Like we'd be totally legally covered. So let's search for migraines. And here we have a whole bunch of uh, results. Right away, of course, Wikipedia makes this offering. But look at all these other people that have said, go ahead, use it, use my information. I want you to. And, uh, and it's really quite a few. I mean, 5,000 results for this word. Good grief. And this as all set up to be free to use by anybody. Change it, alter it, share it, even commercially. Now that is mind-blowing. So, of course, you still want to put your own touch on it, your own spin, and rewrite it so that it feels like you. But, but this way, you're not, you know, feeling like you're bound by... Uh, uh, f guilt or fear of breaking the law or anything these people have published this information with this actual tagging on it now you might examine their page and see if they've got any information um, published on their page concerning the uh, you know the, the freedom of use that they they mean it defines what they mean by uh, this but heck this um, this seems pretty straightforward to me that if it says free to share, use, share, use, share, or modify even commercially, that is, I mean, what else can you say? So, um, I mean, it's even modify. They also have a use or share even commercially. And um, so, so obviously this means these are people that are intending to give you that kind of freedom to recycle their uh, their materials okay so that's pretty wonderful stuff I just thought everybody would like to see that Google has this little tool in there and uh, this is also great for checking niches by the way I've tried this little trick with the see normally it's every anywhere in the page is the search but you can also look just in the titles of a page and find out who's actually using this um, the keyword or even more importantly a keyword phrase see under up here it starts saying all in title migraines and uh, start exploring that you'll unearth a ton of interesting stuff when you start exploring not only the title but the text and um, the URL this is the keyword showing up in the URL or in links to the page, that's people addressing this and linking to it uh, from an article or from their own blog um, and what keywords they used to link to the page. And uh, look at this, you also have um, where your keywords, I mean uh, what region, so you can uh, pick any country and narrow it down to a country. And uh, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? Yes it is. Alright, enjoy. I'm glad I could share this with you. Google Image Search is a great place to start looking for images for teaching and presentations. You can access it by typing images.google.com in your address bar. We're going to search for the Portinari Altarpiece. You can filter your results by size if you just click on Large. You can more specifically search for images larger than a specific resolution. 1024 by 768 is a great one to set that to, as it's the resolution of many projectors. If you're also looking for an image that's an exact size, you can type that in too, but that's not as useful for this search. We're going to look at this first large image and go to the website it's from to look for copyright information so that we can cite it properly. If you're going to save the image, you can, after the search, just click on full size image and then right or control click on the image, depending on if you're using a Mac or a PC, and then select save picture as or save image as. You can then save the image to either your hard drive or your thumb drive, and there you have it, searching for an image with Google Image Search.